back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Nigeria's first elected vice president, Dr. Alex Akweme, dies in London at the age of 85. President Muhammadu Buhari and other Nigerian leaders mourn Dr. Akweme's death, extol the virtues of departed ex-vice president. President Buhari asked members of the judiciary to aid the government's fight against corruption by accelerating dispensation of justice. And Zimbabwe's ruling party prepares to begin impeachment proceedings against President Robert Mugabe, accused him of letting his wife usurp constitutional powers. Just quickly remind you that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. The federal government is demanding explanations from the Italian authorities over the burial of 26 girls found dead on the Mediterranean Sea. The senior special assistant to the president on foreign affairs and diaspora, Mrs. Abike Dabri Erewa, told journalists in Abuja that the Italian embassy had earlier indicated that the burial would take place in Italy on November the 26th, 2017. She says contrary to what the embassy had told the Director General of the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Italian authorities buried the girls last week Friday, nine days before the scheduled date. Mrs. Dabri Erewa was unhappy about the hasty burial of the girls. So for, of all the so-called 26, only three are confirmed as Nigerian. So it's not, we can't even say all 26 are Nigerians, but however, the African girls, they are still our daughters. And Nigeria being the judge of Africa, we're going to champion the rights of these girls. Even an irregular migrant has rights. You know, if there's no supply, there will be no, de if there's no demand, there will be no supply. So while we on our end ensure that we do everything to curtail the supply, they on their end demanding are just as guilty. So it's a strong cabal that is taking over the drug cabal. And that's what we should know and enlighten our people. It's easier now to traffic human beings than traffic drugs. Because with technology, you are getting to, de to, to uh, know who carries it. So this is the next line of business. And this is something that the world must rise up to. And which brings me to the issue of um, uh, slavery. We all know that these girls uh, are sold as slaves. And this is something that should be unacceptable to the whole world. We cannot go back to the dark era where human beings will be sold as slaves. So the UN, EU, Africa Union must intervene. This is the world problem now. We're not going back. And we're not accepting that. And those in Libya must be sanctioned, join NAPTIP, and every parent, every Nigerian, to discourage irregular trafficking. Those girls that are dead, somebody paid four to six thousand dollars for them. It's not a, it's not a free journey, and it's a worthless journey. Hmm. Well, let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Makwe Hogun. Makwe. Oh, hello, Ijoma. The absence of Justice Binta Yako, who is also attending the All Judges Conference, has told the trial of IPOB leader Namdekano for alleged treasonable felony. This is the second time the leader of the prescribed group, IPOB, will be absent in court after the alleged invasion of his home by the military on September the 14th. But his co defendant and a servant senator, Inaya Baribe, who is one of the three persons standing as sureties for the bill granted the IPOB leader, were in court. Kanu's lawyer, Ifanye Jofo, told the judge on October the 17th that Kanu had been missing since soldiers allegedly invaded the IPOB leader's home. The trial will resume on December the 5th. We are I, on the side of the prosecution. We are able, ready to go on with the, the case today. The case is adjourned to me. Till the 5th of um, November. Today, we are here in court for the shortest to explain to the court actually where he is. And you are also aware by virtue of what transpired in this court, our last adjourned date being 17th of December, eh, November, that I don't think that much will happen had it been the court even sit. 
So because of the fact that um, the court reserved the ruling on application, asking the military to produce him in court. So and the, until when that ruling delivered, then we don't know what will happen next in the proceedings. Because uh, when we are saying that the military invaded his house, we supply court, they will supply the court with the material evidence and the documents to show that they actually invaded his house, killed people and arrested him. And at the time they invaded his premises and his home, he was in the house. And they alerted me about the, the onslaught, which I also quickly um, uh, issued a statement to that effect on the 14th day of uh, September 2017. So we have documents to show to the court that, look, this will enter his house on 14th, on uh, 14th of September 2017. And since then, we've not heard from him. We've not, we've not established any form of contact with him. So, and the uh, military, as we are away, they, they came here on a fishing expedition uh, because uh, they were telling the court that on the 14th day of uh, September 2017, that uh, they intercepted a, a, a trolley load of um, arms and ammunition and gave the trolley, the truck a, a hot chase. Eventually ended up in a home they never discovered to be in the kind of home. That is a fairy tale, we told the court. Meanwhile, Senator Einaya Abaribe is in court seeking an order to compel the Chief of Army Staff to either produce Mr. Namdekano in court or pay the bail bond attached to his release. The lawmaker filed the application before a federal high court in Abuja and is, among other things, demanding that the Army Chief offset all expenses he incurred in the trial of the leader of the indigenous peoples of Biafra. Senator Abaribe is standing as surety for Mr. Kano, from whom he signed a bail bond of 100 million naira. On October the 17th, Justice Bintan Yako had ordered Senator Abaribe and Kano's other sureties to appear before her and explain why a bench warrant should not be issued against them. What uh, we are conversing in court is that the state cannot in the words of the lawyers, appropriate and reprobate. The state cannot on its own go ahead to vitiate the uh, bill that we had uh, undertaken and turn around to ask us to come and uh, continue to produce the uh, the person and and uh, our contention is a very simple thing the state acted in a way that made it impossible for us to do what we had undertaken to do and we are asking the court to see the facts and circumstances of the case on the way from the courts, anyone found guilty of cultism or terrorism in Ikiti State now faces the death penalty. The state governor, Ayodele Fayoshi, who signed the bill into law in Ado Ikiti today, says the bill has become necessary to check the rising cases of cultism across tertiary institutions in the state. Only last month, two students of Ikiti State University were murdered by suspected cultists, which drew wide condemnations from residents of Ikiti. Under the new law, anyone found culpable of aiding the activities of cultists or terrorists risks a jail term of life imprisonment uh, as against the earlier prescribed seven-year jail term. Sponsoring court activities. This section, section 5.1 of the principal law is hereby amended by the deletion of the word seven years without an option of fine and substitute with the word life to show and read. And we want to make it very clear that courtism in our state, in our tertiary institution, will not be tolerated and we will fight it by all means to ensure that the lives and property of other students, people and neighbors, and our state in general is at peace. Governor of AKT State, Ayodele Fayoshe. In the south-south of the country, Total EP Nigeria Limited has reaffirmed its commitment to strengthen its relationship with host communities in River State and promote development. The managing director and chief executive officer of the company, Nicholas Terras, made this pledge to the Ege of Ogbaland while on a courtesy visit. <laughs> Egi, 
in Ogba Egbe Mound on the local government area of River State, rich in oil and gas deposits and other natural resources, has played host to oil giant Total E and P Nigeria Limited, operators of OML 58, for over 56 years. And this colorful ceremony is put together to welcome the management of the company on a visit to the community. The traditional ruler of Ogbaland leads his royal train to the arena and receives his guests led by the managing director and chief executive officer, Total Upstream Companies in Nigeria. We are very, very, very proud to also warmly welcome and receive the total EMP, Nigeria Limited Managing Director, Mr. Nicholas Torres, and his team to his this uh, enviable host community. After extending his greetings, the traditional ruler delves into his message. We share the blame. You have some, and we have some. Chief Franco is Lecoq. Amen. Then the Executive General Manager, Corporate Social Responsibility. Go ahead and join the show. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> the Deputy Managing Director, Total E&P, Port Harcourt District, as well as the CEO, are decorated with traditional titles. I'm happy to confirm that implementation of the recently signed MOUs have started. On Ezeegi, I would like to say also that I was listening very carefully to what you are saying on the previous MOU. And we'll endeavor, we'll endeavor to make sure that the implementation of the MOUs we have just signed will be complete and will bring some benefits to the community. The memorandum of understanding between the company and the community includes the sighting of a French university and a modular refinery in a gi community, among others. When the news at 10 returns, United Bank for Africa rewards 12 successful participants in its national essay competition with cash and other consolation prizes. To join us again.